Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a good weekend so far. Students, in this class we are looking at the IELTS speaking section. Specifically, we're going to be focusing in this class on IELTS speaking part two, the cue card. In this part of the speaking interview, you have to look at a set of questions on a topic. Today that topic will be about your grocery store where you go shopping for food. Uh, part two is usually about a place, a person, an idea, an event, or an object. In this case, it's talking about a place and it's very important that you learn to talk in English for one to two minutes about each of these kinds of categories. Today we'll be focusing on a place. Everybody, this is a members chat class. Of course, everyone is encouraged to join the class and watch and learn as we will have speaking part three coming up after this class, which will be open for everybody to join the chat. And in this class, if you want to become a member, simply click the join button next to the subscribe button. Welcome, Fuang. Hi, Anahita, Angel, Domenico. Nice to see so many students in the class ready to learn. Students, this lesson, as usual, is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites that power these live classes. They contain all of our materials, our practice exams, audio materials, interactive course, and lots and lots of videos for you to learn. We will use the websites today to interact with our students for the speaking section. The general IELTS website looks like this at gieltshelp.com to join the premium version of our course simply click the big red button that's just right above my head there it's a one-time payment for lifetime access for the academic IELTS it's the blue background click this big red button to join our premium package there again it's just a one-time payment doesn't cost a lot and it has all the right materials for you to prepare for the IELTS exam we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. We're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent and we use real strategies to help you improve your English, your communication and pass your test. We've got lots and lots of success stories of former students. You can check those out when you have a bit of time. Students, uh, we have this code for you, Create nine for an additional 10% discount from the premium package. So make sure to use that when you uh, click the join now button and you enter your discount code, you'll get an extra little kickback uh, from us to help you uh, in the right direction for your studies. Of course, we have apps. These apps link to the websites, Academic IELTS Help in your app store will link to the aehelp.com website, General IELTS Help will link to the gieltshelp.com so you can download those apps, purchase the course that way also. You only need to purchase one, so either the app or on the website and then you just link them together and you get both of them. To make it easy, you can also use uh, the products on this live stream. Uh, we have Shopify connected as well. If you purchase our course through Shopify, just make sure to send us an email so we can activate your course. Follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. On Instagram, you will find our schedules uh, as well as of course on our YouTube community posts. So make sure to subscribe so you get notifications of these live classes. And if you have any questions for us, uh, please just send them to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. We will get back to you with our answers. Amazon has our books, A Helps Academic IELTS and G Helps General IELTS. So lots and lots of resources for you to improve your vocabulary, your grammar and your communication skills to get those higher band scores so that you can get into university. Uh, get going uh, to the country where you wish to continue the next chapter of your life. We're here to help. 
so students, again, right now it's speaking part two. Uh, this is a members chat class followed in roughly two hours by speaking part three. That will be an all chat class. And then uh, from uh, tomorrow until the 30th, no classes as usual. On the 31st, the last day of August, we'll start off the week with uh, speaking part one for everybody. And then we will do task one graphs for members next uh, Friday. Uh, we'll complete the listening exam from the website that we started yesterday uh, for subscribers. And then of course, uh, we'll do more speaking next Saturday as well. Speaking is just one of those skills, when you master speaking and you can speak well, generally you can write well, you can listen well and read well also. Uh, speaking is like the uh, turbo version of the other parts of language. So that's why we focus so much on uh, speaking. We're constantly releasing new videos. We will have a new one coming out for you in the next day or two. Uh, until then, you can check out the one from last week or the week before. Uh, this video will also help you to improve your English. Make sure to check that out. Welcome, Amra, our chat moderator. Nice to have you uh, here. Okay, everybody, let's jump into our speaking part two cue card. Again, this is speaking, so I strongly encourage you to speak and repeat. Don't be shy. You want to speak as much as possible whenever possible when learning another language. You want to be confident and you want to take every opportunity to use your language. All right, so IELTS speaking. Um, the speaking interview again, 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, speaking part one will be some questions to get to know you better uh, and also some questions on a general topic uh, such as uh, sports or your hobbies. And then uh, the examiner will say that is the end of speaking part one. We will now continue with speaking part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions. Think about your answers. You can take notes in this one minute time if you wish. You have some note paper there and your pencil. And then you will have one to two minutes to speak. Do you understand? At this point, when the examiner says, do you understand? With confidence, uh, you want to respond by saying, yes, it is all clear. I'm ready to start. You want to present the examiner with confident, fluent language throughout the interview. That will get you your highest score, okay? So don't be nervous. You deserve to be there. You paid good money. You've practiced, obviously, lots of English. Uh, so do your best and speak in full sentences. Do you understand? Yes, and it is all clear. I'm ready to start. Okay, uh, talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time begins now. And in this one minute, although it seems like a short time, it is one minute, so it's 60 seconds. Uh, if you count, 60 seconds it's a bit of time especially for our brain our brain moves at the speed of light we're able to have many thoughts in our head very very quickly so as long as our brain is calm confident organized you can think of a lot of great ideas in that one minute to maximize your score and of course that comes down to strategy especially when you have a time limit it's all about strategy. Just think about all of the sports games out there. They're all played on a time limit, okay? Uh, we generally don't play a football game for five days. Mind you, cricket is played quite slowly, but still lots and lots of strategy there over that long period of time. So uh, time limits demand strategy. Just remember that. This is a very important tip, okay? You should not forget strategy. So time limits, demand strategy okay that means you need to think in terms of step one two three four and that will give you the best chance for a high score okay so um, what you need to do 
is firstly, you need to read the question carefully. Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. What this place is. Where is it located? What do you usually buy there? Why do you prefer to go shopping for food there? What would you change about it if you had the chance? Now in the IELTS exam, especially if you're not a thousand percent clear the first time that you read these questions, read them again. Okay, you have to answer these questions. To get high scores, to complete the task, you have to answer all the questions on the card. Contrary to some bad information on the internet and in some classrooms, these questions are not just a guide. They are not there to guide you. They are there for you to answer them. So you have to answer them. Okay, so what is this place? Where is it located? What do you usually buy there? Why do you prefer to go shopping for food there? Uh, what would you change about it if you had the chance? All right, so you've read the questions twice. You recognize that it is a place. And by following the tips and strategies on our websites and our products at uh, aehelp.com, which we will use in a bit for interacting, you will learn that when you're talking about a place, First of all, you need to describe the location. Okay, so where is it? And when you think about it, a lot of these concepts will appear on the cue card. Here we have this, where is it? Where is it located, right? So you have the location, uh, give it a description. Okay, so it's a physical place, you want to describe it. How big is it? What does it look like? Is it one floor, is it two floors, okay? How many aisles does it have of food and other produce? Okay, so describe it. Describe what it looks like. Is it a very colorful store? Is it kind of bland um, on the outside? Is it just a big white building? Okay, so describe it. Location description. That immediately allows your listener, in this case the examiner, to get a visual concept of what you're talking about. Visual concepts are really important for clear communication. Okay. All right, uh, so once you have your location and your description on these parts, you don't want to spend too, too much time. So maybe just 10 seconds on each, okay? It's not the main part of your speech, okay? So you've got anywhere from 60 to 120 seconds. So you have to have a kind of a good idea of where you need to spend your time, okay? So location description, again, about 10, seconds each and then you talk about the attendees uh, who goes there right elderly children families all right if it's a big box store so there are a lot of bulk products uh, you buy large quantities uh, maybe it's a lot of families that shop there uh, because uh, they need lots of food lots of toilet paper diapers for uh, the, their children right so the attendees again not a lot there maybe 15 seconds Okay, and notice that here now you're already at about 35 seconds with this, right? So if you're only getting 90 seconds, you've used up at least a third of your time. Okay, keep that in mind. So you have to be very direct and for high band scores, you don't have time to give wishy-washy information. That means talking about, well, I like to go shopping at lots of different stores, but the one I'd like to talk about today, you're wasting time. Okay, those kinds of sentences will not get you high scores. They lack coherence, they lack vocabulary, so you just need to be a lot more direct. And I know a lot of members already know this. This is for many of our viewers who are here for the first time. So make sure that you don't waste time on templates and unclear or general information. Okay, you need to answer directly. And especially when we're talking about a grocery store, there should be easily one to two minutes of content that you can say about the grocery store that you usually go to. So it's okay to give imaginary answers to questions. At times though, you can get quite fortunate and you'll get a cue card where it's very real. Uh, I'm sure that all of us go to some grocery store regularly and 
we should be able to talk in English about that grocery store for one to two minutes. You shouldn't have to make up information in this case, okay? So you talk about the attendees and then the next is you talk about the activities. Now, these are the bigger parts. So when you talk about the activities, uh, that's where you should spend 30 to 50 seconds of your time, okay? So that's where you should really explain like how often you go there, what, what are the favorite types of foods that you buy there, how long of a time you spend in the store, what kind of a checkout system they have. They have five cashiers, 10 automated tellers. So this is where you spend more of your time. You go there with either your family on the weekend, sometimes you go shopping there with your friends or you go there with your roommate if you're in university. So the activities, that's where we're really interested to find out lots of information, okay? And then comes the experience. So what are your feelings uh, for this location? So you think, you know, it's a great store, they've got some cheap prices, you're always very happy when you can save 20 to 30% on the uh, weekend super sales. So that's where you spend another 30 to 50 seconds, okay, depending. Now, of course, within that time, um, that's where you also look and answer the questions. All right, so you need to make sure that you're looking at these questions here. Why do you prefer to go shopping for food there? And you need to use the key vocabulary from that question. In this case, that key vocabulary is prefer, right? Prefer means it's your preference. It's mean, it means that you choose to go there instead of going to another store. So maybe you choose to go there because the quality of food is better. They have more organic fruits and vegetables and you are a health freak and you really pay attention to what you put in your body and you like the store even though it's slightly expensive because they just have the best quality of carrots, blueberries, strawberries and whatever you buy there, right? What would you change about it if you had the chance? Again, you need to answer that question. You're also paying attention to the grammar. Here you realize that if you had the chance is a conditional. So you need to, need to say, uh, given the opportunity to manage this store, I would give staff slightly better training so they are more familiar with the products that they offer. Frequently when I'm asking them about a product in their store, they have little information and it can be quite frustrating. Okay, so it's a conditional, so you're paying attention to that, right? Okay, so once you have this information, once you know this, then whatever question comes that deals with a place, okay? So talk about a place you like to go study, uh, discuss a place where you go to have fun in your city, then you can go through these steps very, very quickly in that one minute preparation time and just get a really good idea of what to say and how to say it. So the structure of what you're saying, right? Okay, so Domenico says, I like to shop local, support the local industries, the local farmers, the local producers, manufacturers. Um, exactly, Domenico. So these are the concepts that we pay attention to, right? Exactly. Right. Okay, so this thought, all right, so this strategy, this thought that I'm showing you right here, this is happening fast. When you prepared for your IELTS and you've gained this knowledge, again, from these live classes and from your web materials, then this is just a matter of seconds during that 60 second time. And then you have a good amount of time for step two and step two here, it's the most important step, is to think about a couple of good options. Now, most of us probably go shopping at a few different places, right? So uh, think about a couple of good options. Okay. Now here um, with um, 
with step two, we get into some really interesting concepts, right? So Anahita in the chat is saying Kabul Farm and Walmart. Okay, so this is Anahita here from the chat. Thank you, Anahita. Um, I had a similar idea. So here I could talk about Market on Yates, which is more of a kind of a local store. All right. Or I could talk about, let's say, Walmart. Or I could talk about Costco, which are these big international stores. All right. And I think we have very, very similar types of situations in many, many other parts of the world. Um, like in Europe, for example, you might have a local store. And then you might have something like Tesco that's going to be familiar for a lot of you who have traveled around uh, Europe. Tesco is kind of like a slightly smaller version of uh, Walmart in many European countries. And I'm sure that Asian countries have the same as well. So in the speaking, you're thinking critically, right? Now, which should you choose? This is a good question, members, and I would like to hear your answer for this one. So which should you choose? A local grocery store or an international superstore? Okay. Anahita says the easiest one. And Anahita, which one do you think is the easiest one? So this is a good tip, right? So choose wisely, right? As the saying goes, choose wisely. Uh, choose the easiest one that has lots of information. Okay, and it's somewhat original. All right. Amra says, I'm going to choose a local grocery store because I am familiar with it. Okay, Amra, fair enough. Domenico says, I'm inclined to choose my local grocery store. MTJ says, given the chance, I would make the shopping mall more automated with less human interaction. Um, MTJ, I'm not sure where you joined, but this is not necessarily a shopping mall, right? So careful with the question. It's not where do you like to go shopping? It's Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. If you talk about a shopping mall, you could get a very low score because it's not necessarily going to sound like you're buying groceries there. Okay. All right. So careful with that MTJ. Really pay attention to the card. All right. Don't go off topic. It's easier to go off topic than you think. Okay, Nat says, I would talk about an international superstore because those are well known and the examiner can also know those. Yeah, that's a very good point, Nat. Um, and that's important to keep in mind, okay? So this is a really good tip, okay? When you choose a familiar answer, like in this case, Walmart or Tesco, or let's say Spar, the examiner will also likely have information from their experience so their comprehension is going to be easier right if i have experience if i have knowledge about what you're talking about it will be easier to understand you Right. So I will naturally feel like you're doing a better job because I also know what you're talking about. Right. So that's a very, very important point. Here's the challenge, everybody. Try both. So uh, maybe during this class or maybe uh, later on today or during the weekend, um, try both and see what happens. OK. Experiment. So uh, do both, test both.
that will be the best way for you to find out because it really does kind of depend on your English and your knowledge of English and your um, talent, ability uh, to present information spontaneously on a topic like where do you buy groceries. So practice giving an answer for both. Uh, talking about a local uh, store and an international uh, supermarket that is well known. Okay, try both and see what happens. Maybe you'll be surprised if you feel that, hey, I think I did a much better job with my local grocery store, then great, you know that that's going to be an effective approach for you in the future when you sit your IELTS exam. But if you realize that, uh oh, I got into a lot of weird situations trying to explain my local store and it was just way easier to talk about Tesco, Walmart or Spar, then you're going to realize, hmm, yeah, I definitely need to think about giving more well-known answers when possible. Okay, that's a really important tip. Everybody got that? So could I get some thumbs up there in the chat? That's an important one, okay? That's how you know. Should I be choosing something that's, you know, more unique and familiar for me and takes better explanation, better insight? Or should I just go with some more generic kind of well-known uh, concepts, right? All right, Angel says, couple of thumbs up there. Fong is giving me four thumbs up. That's great. Amra, Mal, Domenico. Very nice, yes. So, careful with it. All right, well, I'm going to give you a sample response to this question. Um, spontaneously, I don't prepare these beforehand, just so you kind of get the same idea. So I do this, um, you know, just the same like you do. And then um, we'll give each other a chance to practice this part too, okay? We'll do lots of lots and lots of speaking practice today. So um, at this point, of course, we want to take notes, right? Uh, before our one minute preparation time is up. So I'm going to choose Walmart just for simplicity's sake. I have a feeling that I'm going to be able to talk about Walmart quite easily and uh, and give a lot of just clear information, focusing, making sure that I answer all the questions on the card, okay? So first of all, the location, um, it's about, so in the real exam, when you're doing location, just maybe do an L, you don't need to write location, you want to use your time as efficiently as possible, okay? So for the location, um, it's called Uptown, shopping center by the way you can google that as it, it is in victoria um it's about 5k from my house okay and one aspect there that i would also add to my notes is easily accessible uh, there are a lot of big roads leading to it uh, it's got lots of parking now i have to be careful only 10 seconds right so i'm use, giving information that is unique even though walmart is not so unique and there might be a good number of other candidates talking about walmart especially in canada i'm going to think about some ideas here for my notes that are not automatically in my head right so easily accessible there's lots of parking um, and it's easy to get there which is important for me All right, so uh, that's the location. The appearance, it's two stories, okay, two floors. It's thousands of square meters even, I would say. It's a very big store. Um, it's got over a hundred aisles. And I would do it like this. Okay. Uh, and then that's about it. Okay. Maybe I would write down iconic uh, blue, yellow, right? So it's got the signature Walmart colors, all right? And then um, after I've written about the appearance, then I talk about the attendees. So people that go there, all kinds of people. Right? Um, 
and you can see a lot of newcomers to Canada as well uh, there just because uh, you can get all of your needs in one place and the, the cheap prices right so a lot of um, first generation Canadians okay okay and then the experience so <clears throat> it's convenient because it has groceries and lots of other uh, items that a person needs in their household okay so it's definitely convenient it's cheap I want to make sure that I don't forget about that okay it's spacious for sure so I don't feel like I'm being uh, crowded there okay uh, large quantities Okay, big selection sure okay like it and hate it at the same time I like Walmart definitely uh, it makes life easier and I dislike Walmart because they do sell a lot of cheap products that end up in the garbage and polluting the environment <clears throat> they're simply just not durable or they don't have a lot of shelf life okay now um, on the note paper a really important word that you can write down that can help you to save half a band or even a band score in your speaking is this word okay and you might even want to write that on your note paper at the top Or even better yet, you might even want to write that at the top and at the bottom. Okay. Just to super remind yourself that you have to answer those questions on the card. Okay. It happens very frequently that candidates forget some of those important questions on the card right so when you're looking at your notes and you should look at your notes then you realize oh yeah okay there's some questions there on the card that I need to make sure I pay attention to right and then your last step step five in this case is your first sentence practice this timing at home Okay, so um, feel that one minute. And again, this first sentence, you can actually do this um, not at the end of the one minute, but you can even do this earlier. Just so you have it, it's really important. You can write it down, okay, or at least say it in your head a couple of times. You want to really start your speaking part two with a very clear, direct sentence, okay? Now, what would that sentence be? Can somebody give me the sentence? So look at the cue card. I don't want to you know, give you all of this information. I want you to think for yourselves. So here's the cue card again for today's practice, okay? Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries what this place is where is it located what do you usually buy there why do you prefer to go shopping for food there what would you change about it if you had the chance so give me a nice uh, full first sentence here okay Anahita very good nice you're very active today that's great so Anahita says this would be my first sentence a place where I like going to buy groceries is Walmart because it is located near my house which it would be just a 15 minute walk uh, why are you using wood here Anahita you got to be careful with that um, it's awkward okay careful uh, students avoid those modals um, I think it's there's again just some weird information out there in the world of IELTS uh, or English where people think they need to use a lot of modals modals should come naturally generally people don't use them uh, that often um, we like to use more affirmative language so it is located near my house which is just a 15 minute walk okay 
So Anahinta, careful with those modals. They can really make the language confusing. Okay, it's better to focus on affirmative language. All right. Otherwise, it is a good first sentence. So a place where I like going to buy groceries is Walmart because it is located near my house, which is just a 15 minute walk. Okay, um, I would even do this house. It is just a 15 minute walk. Okay. All right. Um, Amra says. One of my favorite places to shop for groceries is the Bravo supermarket, conveniently located just three blocks away from my home in downtown Baku. Perfect. Okay, nice, strong, clear start. All right. Um, Angel says... The fly market is at the top of my list in order to supply my household needs and necessities. Um, okay, Angel, uh, is the name of the place fly? Or are you trying to say flea market? Which is not really the name, but it's a kind of market. Flea market is where you have small vendors uh, kind of grouped together. So um, be cautious there, um, Angel. So Angel says, no, I use my imagination. Um, Angel, I wouldn't use my imagination for this question. I don't think it's the type of question that requires imagination. All of us, by the time we reach, let's say, the age of 15, 16, should be able to talk about a grocery store where we go to buy food and other household necessities, right? So this, for me, is starting to sound strange um, right from the beginning, Angel. And I think partly that is because you're trying to be creative here. Um, instead of saying, uh, is at the top of my list, that's kind of strange for this one is my go-to place okay remember this idiomatic expression or this um, it's not even idiomatic it's just an expression um, the fly market um, again see because there is such a, uh, a situation as a flea market the examiner would probably go did they just try to say flea market or uh, I'm not sure if they're trying to say flea market or fly market so you have to be careful uh, in order to supply supply is not the best verb here in order to if you want a nice high level vocabulary um, instead of buy you can say procure okay so uh, and let's change the fly so it's not so awkward the um, Smith market, let's call it. Okay, again, I wouldn't use my imagination here. Uh, our imagination kind of fails when it's such a common part of our life. Our brain is constantly just thinking of the real names, right? Like uh, Superstore, Walmart, Tesco, and so on, right? So the Smith market is my go-to place in order to procure my household needs and necessities. Uh, and again, um, avoid the repetition of ideas as well so my needs uh, you've got lots of content for this so you don't need to be repeating words unnecessarily like needs and necessities you're just doubling up on words right it sounds like you're emphasizing but you're really just filling okay so you want to avoid those fillers all right Okay, uh, Fuang says, so I'm just, you know, I'm being hypercritical here, uh, members. I know that you never take it the wrong way. Um, it's just for all the viewers. I'm being hypercritical here of how a person who's examining language and communication, because that's exactly what your examiner is doing, is they're analyzing your speech. And when you're band five or six, they're analyzing a lot of the language aspects like the grammar, the vocabulary. When you're band seven, eight, nine, they're analyzing a lot of the communication aspects of your speech. So how accurate, how convincing, um, how clear uh, you transmit your ideas, okay? 
All right. So Fuang says, a lovely place where I like going to purchase my daily necessaries necessities is called Circle K located a couple of blocks from my house and I've heard of Circle K it's uh, one of the big international stores in Asia so uh, that's a good one okay just a couple of slight mistakes there flung to make that a hundred percent all right okay Domenico and yeah, it's a good strategy. So Fuang, I really like how you didn't overcomplicate it. So you didn't really um, put in tricky words or expressions. You're just like, okay, I'm going to start simply. Or a lovely place where I like going to purchase my daily necessities is called Circle K, located a couple of blocks from my house. Sure, so nothing too fancy, right? We don't want to make mistakes in that first one or two sentences because first impressions are important and it just looks really, really bad when there are awkward mistakes right in that first sentence, right? So, so we don't want to do that. Um, Domenico says, my favorite grocery shop is a convenience store. Not convenient, convenience. It's different there. Okay, everybody repeat after me. Convenient. It is a convenient place to shop. It is a convenience store located around the corner from my house. Okay. They're called convenience stores, corner stores. Okay. Convenience. Careful with that one. See, this would be the situation where the examiner is like, well, okay. You might be able to get a band seven, but I don't feel comfortable giving a band eight to a candidate that doesn't know the difference between a convenience store and a convenient store, right? So convenience is the right word here. Convenience store versus is the same as a corner store. Okay, that's all right. It's good to make those mistakes, Domenico, because that's why we're here. We're here to learn, right? So Domenico says, my favorite grocery shop is a convenience store called AR Discount, which happens to be the largest grocery store in town. It's situated about a five minute uh, walk or drive from my home, right? <clears throat> okay, good. Nice use of quantitative language there. All right. Yeah, MTJ, there is a list of high-level vocabulary words um, on the website. I'll show you that in just a moment. We'll take a look at uh, Mal's um, response here as well first. Okay, uh, Mal says, I prefer going to care for. It's five minutes uh, from my home. They usually have all the brands we use in my household. I like it. It's original. It's not too complex. You can say this kind of nice and paced, right? I prefer going to care for. It's five minutes drive from my home. They usually have all the brands we use in my household. Good. Mom, that's great. All right. I like how you're very directly answering the question. Um, MTJ is asking, is there a list of high level vocabulary words? Because that would be really helpful for me. Yes. Uh, go to aehelp.com. Uh, go to your My Student account. In your My Student account, if you go to the uh, blog up at the top there, okay, and uh, you type in the search, there's a search bar here, you can type in vocabulary, okay, um, then you'll see IELTS vocabulary, vocabulary for high scores. Uh, there's lots and lots of different uh, ones there that you can click on. Um, and here is a list of the 570 most used words in academic contexts of English. And they are even organized from the most to the least most. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. It's from a university study that looked at a whole bunch of textbooks, university lectures, 
uh, intellectual uh, panel discussions, presentations, and they looked at which words are being used the most by academic literature and speakers, and they came up with that list. So you can find that on the website in the blogs, okay? Search for the blog, search for uh, vocabulary in the blog at aehelp.com and we have that list for you and then there's even a nice uh, little short uh, writing here about how you can uh, remember and practice these words so uh, lots of help there for you again on the websites okay all right Good question, MTJ. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, my uh, little presentation here. And uh, again, remember everybody, you can speak and repeat. So copy what I say, copy how I say it, read what I write, try to do it from listening. So a place that I frequent for uh, groceries at least a couple of times a month is Walmart located about a, a five minute drive from my home there you go so again here's the cue card for those of you just joining in right now this is speaking part two uh, it's really good to reflect on the cue card regularly when you're practicing for speaking Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. You should say what this place is, where is it located, what do you usually buy there, why do you prefer to go shopping for food there, what would you change about it if you had a chance. And see, reading the cards, um, I noticed that it says like going to. And it's important to reflect that. I haven't quite done that yet, so I need to make sure that I do that, okay? So a place that I frequent for groceries at least a couple of times a month doesn't necessarily mean I like it, okay? Um, I like this place for several reasons, right? This is why it's important to look at the card. Firstly, not only is it close to my home, but it is also easily accessible by car as there are main roads leading to it and lots of parking this makes it convenient for me to buy lots of groceries for my family in one trip and save tons of uh, time not having to go shopping uh, often okay in addition I enjoy the large selection of goods and produce as well as the low prices okay so really focusing on that concept of I like this place right that's what the questions asking me talk about a grocery store that you like going to so I enjoy it I like it I prefer it I love it these words need to come into the communication the examiner is really listening for those with this kind of a cue card everybody got that it's another one of those places where I would love to see a thumbs up <laughs> Okay, so I really want to make sure that you're picking up these points because it's these little details as the saying goes, the devil's in the details. It's these little details like saying, I enjoy it, I like it, I love it, um, that will get you those better band scores. Fuang says, yes, sir, and she's even using this emoji, <laughs> which is kind of a fun one. Okay, um question so <clears throat> instead of me just kind of filibustering and and giving you all of the information in one fell swoop what would what would uh, be a good sentence to write after this there's kind of a very obvious sentence that should follow this and um i want you to kind of think like me obviously so uh what do you think would be a logical sentence to follow from here 
Uh, take a look at this, okay? So, and again, repeat, speak and repeat. So in addition, I enjoy the large selection of goods and produce as well as the low prices, okay? What would be a good sentence to follow from here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Amra, be confident. It doesn't have to be a question mark. Discounts. Yeah, give an example, right? Obviously. So remember, the key to success in the IELTS speaking section is answer, explain, example. And that's no different in speaking part two. Okay, in speaking part two, you also want to be thinking about clear explanations and examples. That's right, Mauro. Look at Mauro just jumping in suddenly with a fabulous answer. Mauro says, giving examples, right? Like, what do you mean, big selection? Okay, so I can uh, choose from five different uh, brands of diapers uh, for my baby daughter and I can buy it for about uh, $20 which is half the price of my uh, local uh, grocery store okay exactly Mauro Mauro you get a thumbs up get in there Mauro give us some more good answers like that yeah examples right you want to emphasize that bring it into the real world so in addition I enjoy a large selection of goods and produce as well as the low prices I can choose from five different brands uh, of diapers for my baby daughter and I can buy it for about twenty dollars which is half the price of my local grocery store also the cost of apples oranges and bananas is 20% less than just about anywhere else in the city. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going along nicely. And then uh, I look at my notes. So if I'm like, hmm, what should I say next? Then I look at my notes. Uh, so attendees, right? Or the appearance. Okay. I haven't talked too much about that. And it doesn't have to be perfectly ordered as long as you include it. Okay. So this mega store is thousands of square meters of retail space with two floors filled with hundreds of aisles of merchandise so i like going there because i can find all of my needs in one place not only myself but most people in Victoria enjoy uh, shopping at uh, Walmart for these reasons okay so again I'm going back there all right now um, at the same time, I'm also keeping an eye on the card. And again, that's why I have those words questions on the notes because it reminds me, look at the questions, okay? So um, I need to make sure that I'm answering these. So what the place is, I'm doing a good job answering that. Where is it located? I've talked a bit about that. I don't think I necessarily need to talk more. What do you usually buy there? Okay, I haven't clearly answered that yet. Uh, so I might want to give a bit more there. Um, why do you prefer to go shopping for food there? Okay, I've talked about that a bit and I've even given some examples. So that one's okay. Now, you can mentally or even on the paper do little check marks uh, for these, okay? You can't write on the question booklet, but you can kind of do it on your note paper and be like, okay, check, check, not a check, check, and then not a check. So 
Uh, I know that these two questions I need to uh, discuss, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Most often, I purchase all of my frozen foods and dairy uh, products uh, at Walmart. Uh, such as milk, cheese, frozen pizza, and ice cream. These tend to be the same in any grocery store in the city. They are just much better uh, priced there. Okay. And then I answer that last question. Given the chance to make an improvement to uh, Walmart, I would add a few sections that offer higher uh, quality products and food for customers who are willing to spend the extra uh, money. Uh, they could offer better uh, quality meat like um, AAA uh, steak. Okay. Nevertheless, for all of its benefits, low prices and convenience, I really do like to go to uh, Walmart for my food purchases, okay? And that's my uh, concluding sentence there. And that's about two minutes, mm, all right? So again, let's go through this and you can kind of see now how I put this all together and then just read and repeat with me, okay? Before we start to uh, practice. All right, here we go. So talk about a place you like going to to buy groceries. A place that I frequent for groceries at least a couple of times a month is Walmart, located about a five-minute drive from my home. I like this place for several reasons. Firstly, not only is it close to my home, but it is also easily accessible by car as there are many uh, roads leading to it. Lots of parking. This makes it convenient for me to buy my groceries for my family in one trip and save tons of time not having to go shopping often. In addition, I enjoy the large selection of goods and produce as well as the low prices. I can choose from five different brands of diapers for my daughter and I can buy it for $20, which is half the price of my local grocery store. The cost of apples, oranges, bananas is 20% less than just about anywhere else in the city. This mega store is thousands of square meters of retail space with two floors filled with hundreds of aisles of merchandise. So I like going there because I can find all my needs in one place. Not only myself, but most people in Victoria enjoy shopping at Walmart for these reasons. Uh, most often I purchase all of my frozen foods, dairy products like milk, cheese, frozen pizza and ice cream at Walmart. These tend to be the same in any grocery store in the city. They're just better priced there. Given the chance to make an improvement to Walmart, I would add a few sections that offer higher quality products and food for customers who are willing to spend that extra money. They could offer better quality meat, like AAA steak from Alberta. Uh, nevertheless, for all of its benefits, low prices, convenience, I really like going there for my food purchases. Your time is up. I'll stop you there. That would be your band nine fluency content coherence for this cue card. Okay, so that's what you want to practice and replicate at home. All right, and now we're going to do it. We're going to do this, replicate this in this class with hopefully some of our volunteers. And we've got so many uh, members in the class now, which is awesome. We've got new members joining in as well. Uh, Fouad, uh, Mauro, I hope to see you in the chat also. 
Uh, students, uh, Amra has given you the instructions there in the chat as well. Here they are on the screen also. Uh, to volunteer for speaking, go to the website aehelp.com. Okay. Again, our website's Power Our Live Lessons. And uh, the website looks like this. So when you're looking at this page, you're in the right place. You can join the premium course by clicking the big red button. Okay, again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So it's really worth it, especially if you're joining these classes often. Click that button. And then once you do that, um, you are in your My Student account where you've got your computer based practice exams, you've got an academic course, you've got lots and lots of tools, including this tool here that's again above my head the student partner speaking. Uh, click on that, accept the terms, and then you will be in this list here where you can volunteer to speak with me. Now, importantly, everybody, this is also, firstly, for you to be able to talk with each other, find yourself a speaking partner, an IELTS partner, and practice with them. Uh, we've got Angel volunteering here. So Angel has found me in the list, and you will find me as uh, Master. Okay, so I'm in here as Master. Uh, you can click on the blue envelope beside my handle, beside my name, and then when you click on that, you can send me a message like, can I try, I'd like to volunteer, and then uh, we can go from there. All right, now, um, Anna, I remember your message yesterday, so let's, uh, yeah, that was smart of you, so let's give Anna a chance here. Are you ready? And as one of our premium students, um, and I'm going to put on my headset. All right. Don't be sad, Angel. I see you too. Keep volunteering. Okay. Hello. Hi, Anna. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm only, I'm only get back from the beach. You just got back from the beach? Yes. All right. How was beach day? It was very crowded. I felt surprised about this. I never thought it could be like in the end of August. It could be like thousands of people on the. Was on it a nice the, hot day? Yeah, like plus twenty eight today. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Not like that here. We're getting colder weather here now. But uh, I'm glad you had a good beach day. Did you swim in? The, was it uh, the lake or uh, an ocean? Uh, no, in the Black Sea. We have the Black Sea. Black Sea. Okay. Yeah. Did you go swimming? Uh, no, I was like uh, caught some uh, sunlight on the beach. I didn't swim today. Uh, but I do this uh, tomorrow in the morning. <laughs> I think when the water will be clean. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I was catching some rays on the beach. Rays? Okay. Rays. R A Y. Like the rays of the sun. Yeah. All right, Anna, let's get into this cue card speaking part two. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, I will start you off. Here we go. Talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Well, I would say this I'm into the grocery store which called Sinipo, which is located in the center of my city because, in my opinion, it's uh, this store really has a high service and also all the products like food like manga, avocado and others uh, really really fresh and uh, juicy and uh, um, in my uh, also it has a very good discount and uh, being like um, a client of this uh, store I always receive the notification uh, from this and it also gives me 15% discount on all my pur purchases 
and uh, on the top of this, this uh, store has uh, uh, is designed uh, uh, by um, by glass. It has uh, uh, glass uh, doors and uh, also it very light in space uh, premises, uh, which uh, which is well organized. I mean, it has a different um, section of uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, uh, for, for instance, they sort out uh, berries from other uh, fruits like uh, apples or bananas and uh, for me it's pretty easy to uh, find out. Um, but if I had the chance, I would probably um, make some improvement about uh, like uh, their, their staff because in my opinion they have uh, shortage of uh, managers who like uh, work with clients in this store and uh, also it's it's some um, some of the um, um, uh, instruction need to be added in English it could be make uh, my life easier than because most of them okay. in Ukrainian yeah your time is up I will stop you there and we will now continue to part three. All right. Um, so yeah. first of all, your band score. So uh, for that, Anna, I would give you about a band 6.5. Okay, so somewhere between fluent and good. Uh, you were definitely fluent. So you were talking and your uh, task completion was quite good. So it felt like you answered uh, most, if not all of the questions on the card. You paid attention to that last uh, question, which was if you could change a some part of this store what would it be so you said you would uh, probably uh, change the uh, staffing to include more managers um, the reason it's a 6.5 and not a 7 is because there were a number of language and grammatical mistakes so incorrectly used expressions uh, mm -hmm. some awkward grammar awkward words and so you really want to correct those Anna so in this case what I would recommend you do of course if we did this in um, like a classroom setting I would record this session and then I would go through the recording with you and every time that you make a mistake with the words or with the expressions I would explain why that's a mistake and then give you the correct form mm -hmm. so that you could practice it okay, mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. So, in which tenses I more like which grammar simple yeah. grammar let, let me uh, let me give you a few examples okay so um, first of all you said well I would say that I'm into this grocery store um, being into a grocery store is a little bit awkward we're into movies we're into music but okay. to say that we're into a grocery store this is where you kind of feel the language it's a little bit awkward so it's not really wrong it's just a little bit awkward and then you said which is called what's the name of this store ah simple simple it's like on italian Sim simple s-i-m-p-l-e l-e uh, space, uh, gap space, and the uh, C I, yes, uh, L O, no E. C L. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is a tip for everybody, not just Anna. Uh, when you're giving the name of a location or an object, especially if it's some kind of a unique name that might not be familiar for your listener, you really want to emphasize it, like two hundred percent. Anna, because this is the store. This is your subject, right? So you want mm -hmm. to make sure that you have a lot of emphasis. And if you listen back to this YouTube recording after this class, um, you're going to notice that you're not really emphasizing it. You just kind of almost mumble the name of the store and it makes it really awkward. And I get stuck there as a listener. I'm like, what was the name of that store? So you have to, you have to really emphasize. You have to say, well, I would say that I'm into this grocery store, which is called Lasilo, like really like throw it out there right like Lasilo mm. it's an mm. Italian and you can even say it's an Italian name Lasilo which is located mm. in the center of the city because you want me to understand that like if I'm a tourist you mm. you almost want to spell that out for me L-E-C-I-L-O Lasilo right mm. um, so make that a hundred percent clear okay yeah um, the produce like avocado and mango are really juicy okay avocados are not really juicy but sure um also it has a really good discount also i, I said fresh and juicy fresh and juicy mm -hmm. and then also it has a really good discount also 
the store has really good discounts, uh, plural, right? Discounts is plural? Yes, because okay. they have more than one discount, right? So, right. and on my phone, I always get notifications of these discounts. So, your tense is okay. It's more that you're kind of missing words to make your language clear that you want to include, mm -hmm. okay? Um, of these savings if I don't want to repeat discounts. Okay, uh, just repeat this one sentence after me, Anna. So also the store has really good discounts and I get notifications on my phone for these savings. Also the store has really good discounts and on my phone I always get notifications of these savings. On the top of this, okay. this store is designed by Glass. No, 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 stop going there. Okay. <laughs> That's incorrect English there too, so. Um, yeah. On top of that is a bit strange for a connective here um, because it's not in addition to this, right? It's kind of a different part of your description. So I would just start If you with, lower my marks, yes? On yes, this. yes, exactly. So anytime you use connections or expressions incorrectly, it lowers your store, be your score because it's, it's kind of strange mm -hmm. for the listener. So this store um, is designed uh, with a lot of glass. I mean a lot of, you mean like a lot of windows, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then you said also it has light and space premises. Um, uh, I mean it uh, mm -hmm. has very light uh, colors like uh, li uh, like yellow or white yeah. not so dark like yeah so dark. i would say it this way anna this store is designed with a lot of glass a lot of windows which makes it bright and spacious try that sentence so this store is designed with a lot of glass a lot of windows which makes it bright and spacious this store is designed with a lot of glass a lot of windows which makes it bright and spacious what does it mean spacious spacious means it has lots of space so you don't feel like you're in a small area right space spacious okay mm -hmm. spacious store mm -hmm. it's the adjective all right so anna what you want to do again is listen to yourself listen to the recording correct as much as possible on your own and then whenever possible check with somebody so check with a teacher or an instructor or a peer and say how would you say that how do you think you would say that naturally and of course these days ai uh, can help you a mm -hmm. lot to rephrase uh, in a kind of better way mm -hmm. that's clearer yeah. okay yes i'm not trying to use ai like chat gpt because i want to like use my knowledge because on the exam day i would, will be without any ai or grammar <laughs> yeah, no, no like ai in the exam <laughs> yeah um there's uh, there's two there's two problems with the ai right one is what you said where we become dependent and we're not learning mm -hmm. uh, that's one problem there is another problem too ai is still very generic so it doesn't sound original so if you're using ai like language it's very obvious for the listener that it's not a specific piece of information and to get those high band scores you have to have unique specific information that's kind of used so there however um as a first step it's not it's it's a good tool as a first step okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, because because I had like general idea about which talk about the strategies, uh, but uh, I understand this like some lexical fillers will lower my score. I never thought about this. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So you want to use the right expressions for sure, Anna. Sure, Anna. Have a great rest of your day, Anna. I hope you okay. have a safe rest. Thank you very much for giving me a chance. Yeah, thank you. Bye, Anna. All right. Thumbs up for Anna. Um, Angel, where did you go? Did you go to the bottom? All right. I know you volunteered, so I'm going to see. Because you're like, I was the first. Why didn't I get a chance? Are you ready? And Angel's also a member there in the list. So um, I saw that communication, Angel. Let me give you a chance. If you're there, if you're ready, if you have a connection, then uh, we can give it a shot. So um, I see that you maybe reconnected a couple times is why. Okay. Good job, Anna. Absolutely. Hello, sir. Hi, Angel. How are you? 
I'm doing great. How about you? I am doing quite well also. Thank you for asking. All right, Angel, are you ready to tackle this cue card? Yes, sir. All right. By the way, um, Angel, everybody, this cue card, it's a very possible cue card. Let's just say that um, for your IELTS exam. Um, in the coming weeks or months. All right, here we go. Uh, so Angel, I'm going to start you off and then when you're ready, just give me the answer, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Um, when it comes to household shopping, uh, Migros, which is a chain grocery market in Turkey, is always my go-to place to, uh, to procure what I need. Uh, luckily, it is conveniently only two blocks away from my apartment. Uh, this market is with big selection and offers a wide range of products, from junk food to healthy options, um, from a vast number of brands. Uh, moreover, products are greatly categorized based on their types, uh, which makes it easy to find what I want. Uh, so. This feature reduces the need to visit uh, multiple stores to, uh, to find what I need. Another remarkable aspect of this uh, market is the freshness of its products. They are, um, I mean, uh, the owner of these markets are diligent about monitoring the expiration dates of their items, particularly in terms of uh, dairy products and vegetables. I've never come across an, exp uh, an expired product there, which is not worthy. So if I had to choose a grocery store, uh, which provides me with all types of goods, um, it would definitely be Migros. Nevertheless, given the chance to change one aspect of this market, I would like to make changes uh, as prices, uh, which are not affordable compared to its counterparts. Uh, if it, uh, if this uh, store could offer more reasonable prices, I would be completely satisfied. Okay, your time is up. I'll stop you there. And we'll go on to um, part three. All right, Angel, that was really good. Okay, a um, couple of really good strategies there. So let's talk about the good first. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, you did a, a fairly good job of answering all of the questions. Uh, you did an outstanding job of the vocabulary. So you stayed away from really awkward expressions or vocabulary. All of the vocabulary was well placed and a lot of it was very nice high level vocabulary. So you used um, nice collocations like remarkable aspect. Uh, for example, uh, expiry dates of products, okay? Uh, you use the word diligent, <clears throat> monitoring. So just really nice vocabulary put together in some very coherent sentences that expressed and explained why uh, you like going to the store. Um, the same kind of thing as with Anna. At first, I didn't really catch uh, the name of the store. I thought you said Migors. <laughs> Migros. I, I got it the second time, though. Um, so, um, yeah, so at first I was like, huh, what was that store? Because you kind of just moved through it. However, <laughs> you applied a good strategy, and this is a good strategy. So pay attention, everybody. Learning from your peers is really, really important. And if nothing else, learn this from Angel's response. Uh, Angel repeated the name of the store. Okay. okay. Uh, notice in my um, example as well that happens. So the name of the store, that's the subject, right? Where do you like going to buy groceries? It is Walmart. The easiest answer for that in three words is it is Walmart, right? So the subject being Walmart. So ideally, with a great answer, you're repeating the word Walmart like I did here. I can see it again here in my response. And I think I have it actually a couple of more times uh, in my response as well. So I have it th four times here. Um, so even if a person hasn't heard the word Walmart, by the end of my response, it's very clear that it's Walmart, right? Um, and so you achieve the same by repeating the name of the store. So you said uh, a little bit later on, so if I had to choose 
a store it's Migros and you actually pronounced it a bit heavier the se second time so I was like oh okay that's the store name um, so I got it so that was really good and then you want to copy that strategy from Angel okay uh, there were a yeah. couple of slight mistakes just smaller mistakes with um, your grammar like um, you said the prices is so it was um, I would change prices which is not affordable which are not affordable because it's prices um, so there were just uh, some really subtle grammatical mistakes there weren't major they weren't too awkward little bit with the content um, for instance in this case I would have liked to hear a little bit about what Migros actually looks like so is it like a medium-sized market is it a large size superstore does it have like 20 cashiers or just maybe three or four so maybe a little bit more there to give me a little bit clearer perspective I would say your band score as is though Angel is an eight eight to eight point five it was really strong okay so just small small mistakes and it, to go to for that nine you want to just correct those tiny little mistakes okay okay sir um sir uh, in terms of the name of the market i wanted to use my imagination power because the name of markets here in turkey is a little bit weird and because of that i wanted to change it into an english name but um but you said that don't you don't do this because of that i um yeah i use the name of um turkish uh market and it was good i i liked how you used the so i'm guessing the actual name is migros right yeah yeah that's totally fine it's just that you want to pronounce it very very clearly right uh for the listener um, but uh, but no, you shouldn't be making up information when it's such common information for sure. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Thank so, Angel, you. yeah, overall very good. Absolutely, keep it up. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for your helpful feedback. You're most welcome. Bye, Angel. Bye. All right, that was really good. Give Angel a thumbs up. Yeah, very strong English. Very well composed uh, response. All right, uh, Fouad and Maro Cruz, are you in here? I don't see you. Okay, um, let's give somebody else a chance. Uh, Malad is a premium user. Malad, are you ready? We haven't heard from Malad, I think, ever. So if Malad is there, let's give Malad a chance. Hopefully, I like the flying hearts. That's awesome. <laughs> Malad says, yep. All right. Okay, Malad, are you there? Sounds like you picked up. I don't quite hear you yet, though. Malad, you might need to check your connection if this is the first time you're using this chat interface. Um, my suggestion, if you can hear me, is to uh, practice or try with another um, premium user. And uh, if you're having difficulties, send an email. You might need to use a VPN. You have to check your connection, see if it's a dynamic connection. Okay, so check back again in a bit. Malad, I would love to hear from you. Uh, Shakther, I think, might never have volunteered as well. So, Shakther, are you ready? I think Shakther just signed up for our premium package recently. Uh, Shakther, if you're there, let me know, and then we'll connect for this part too. Okay. Hang in there, students, because you never, ever know when you'll get the chance. Okay. And so Fuad says no mic. Got it. Okay. 
Okay, check there. I'm not sure what's going on there. You might want to check your system. All right, Andres. Let's see if Andres is there. Sure. Are you ready? Thank you for the good morning. Nice full sentences, Andres. That's great. It says, good morning, Adrian. I'd like to give it a try if possible. Thank you. Absolutely, Andres. If you're there, let me know. And then we'll connect. Okay. Again, especially if you're a premium user, you want to figure this system out and you want to make sure that you can connect. We're going to be doing live classes through the website in the coming weeks as well, which will be a new kind of feature of the website. So make sure you figure out the intricacies of the website, how to use it, how to connect. Connect your microphone. students there's a six second delay between YouTube so make sure you have the audio on the website Andres I don't hear you are you there uh, by the way everybody uh, make sure that you allow the browser to use your microphone and your speaker okay uh, there's usually a little pop-up on the screen if it's your first time it'll say do you allow this website to use your microphone and your speaker so check those settings Andres I don't hear you hopefully the issue is not on my end um, but uh, anyway um, let's see let's take somebody else um, let's give Fuang a chance because Fuang has had some difficulties Fuang are you ready hopefully uh, works with Fuang today Fuang says no sound okay it's probably on your end, Fuang, because as you can see, it works with others. So, okay, yeah, Fuang, I don't hear you either. It's okay. We'll keep trying, All right? Um, Amra, let's see if Amra's there. Amra, are you ready? Fuang, try a VPN. Uh, sometimes what happens is your internet provider changes their routing and they'll you don't even know it so they'll route through a different system that they think is cheaper or more stable and then suddenly you don't have sound hello sir hi Amra how are you I'm doing well sir what about you I am doing great. Thank you for asking, Amra. Well, there's definitely sound, so it does work when you have the right connection, right, Amra? Yeah, yeah I'm using VPN, so for that reason, it's working. Yeah, yeah, there's still, I mean, with uh, video audio chat software, whether it's through our website or WhatsApp or Skype, um, there's still issues when you're using it internationally, right? Because a lot of these um, connections internationally are not designed to function together well or they're purposefully not designed to function because they don't want you sharing information between i don't know the us and china or something right yeah. so they have some really weird um firewalls and things like that in place unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> one day one day we'll be unified as humans um hopefully sooner than later because we need to save our planet from ourselves but uh, anyway let's not go there um all right uh amra are you ready to by the way thank you for moderating the chat i'm glad that uh, i have the chance to thank you verbally um amra are you ready to answer this cue card yes i'm ready Okay, here we go. So talk about a place you like going to buy groceries. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Uh, one of my favorite places to shop for groceries is uh, Brawler Supermarket, uh, which is conveniently, conveniently located just three blocks away from my home in downtown Baku. Uh, it stands as a two story retail haven. Uh, with a huge parking lot offering a diverse uh, selection of commodities. Uh, the supermarket has become my go-to destination for purchasing a variety of essential goods ranging from uh, fresh produce 
daily products and uh, even to uh, supplies for my beloved cat. And what sets a, a Bravo apart from uh, apart and make it my preferred choice is that exceptional customer experience it offers. Uh, the supermarket is staffed with incredibly friendly and helpful employees who are willing to lend a hand, especially when I am on the hunt for a specific item and need guidance. And their willingness to assist creates a welcoming atmosphere that enhances the overall shopping experience. And the affordability of prices at Bravo is another significant factor that keeps me coming back. Uh, as they, uh, indeed, they uh, do auctions uh, as the prices of various goods are generously discounted, sometimes even up to uh, an impressive 50%. Uh, I acquired a delightful doll for my younger sister at a mere $15, a remarkable 50% reduction from its typical $30 price tag found throughout the town. And however, if I were to suggest any, any, an improvement, it would be an improvement in enhancing its online shopping and delivery services, while in the store experience is already excellent. Incorporating online platform could cater to customers who um, who prefer the convenience of shopping from the from the comfort of their home. Okay, your time is up. I will stop you there, and we'll go on to part three. Amra, that was outstanding. Uh, very good. Uh, very very good. Uh, Eight point five to nine band on that. So um, that would be a, a very good to expert, no doubt. Um, if like I'm being hypercritical here, uh, Amra, uh, just a couple of changes that I would make. So uh, even supplies for my beloved cat. Supplies is okay. Um, I would say cat food, uh, just to be a little okay. bit clearer there, right? Um, mm -hmm. But you know, you could say, well, I meant supplies. Like I buy other types of uh, necessities for my cat as well. So it's arguable, but. Uh, uh, that's the examiner's preference, right? So that's where you really need to um, impress the examiner. Now, let's focus on the positive though, right? So why would I say potentially ban nine? Um, well, first of all, you really good job in applying what you learn. So uh, copy Umrah in this way, viewers, that he was listening to the tips during the class. He listened to the different advice that I gave to the other volunteers. He was listening to some of the new vocabulary and he used it right away. So I caught all of those, Amra. Pe examiners, <laughs> teachers catch those. So Amra said, Bravo supermarkets. And then later you said, prices at Bravo. And I realized your brain going, oh, say Bravo again. Bravo. Um, so I caught <laughs> that. And then uh, the go to shopping destination, I taught that. Uh, um, vocabulary earlier today. It's my go-to place. Uh, so that was really, really good. Um, it's a two-story retail, did you say Haven? Yeah. Yeah. Haven. Um, just pronounce this word after me. Haven. Not Haven. Haven. Strong V. Haven. Haven. Yeah. Haven. Yeah. So the pronunciation was just slightly off. There it was one of the other things. I was like, oh, I think it was Haven, but it's not Heaven. Haven. Sure. Um, so again, just being super nitpicky. Um, good use of the fifty percent off. So giving the examples, right? You picked that up uh, from the earlier part of the lesson as well, where when you say it has really good discounts, give an example of that discount, right? Um, the question is about groceries. Why do you like buying your food there? you were answering the question quite well you could have focused a little bit more on the food aspect of it so buying you know your produce your meat your vegetables etc there but um very very good uh um answer overall and uh, a very strong finish so the um the conditional uh for suggesting an improvement um, it was a brilliant thought. It was a smart thought to talk about the online shopping experience, right? The pickup delivery, which a lot of stores are offering these days. And that was a really clever answer. Examiners do like clever ideas. So that kind of an idea for those candidates who think about it will 
definitely help them to get a better band score saying well their in-store shopping experience is great nevertheless if i could make an improvement i would love to see a better online shopping platform so that i could uh, get groceries delivered to my home and that was really smart that was a really smart finish so um ielts does reward smart thinking absolutely okay so keep that in mind for sure <laughs> Amra, thank you so much for that brilliant answer and for reflecting all of those different points that were learned throughout the lesson today. Thank you very much, sir, for your incredible feedback. No, that was really good. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah, examiners pick up on it. So have a great rest of your day, Amra. I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you, sir. Definitely. Have a good day. You too. Bye, Bye. for now. All right, that was Amra. That was really good. Amra being our chat moderator, he's very active. He's in the classes. And one aspect of Amra's learning that is... Uh, definitely um, a, a part of his approach that we should all adapt in our own learning is to use what we hear, use what we learn, just like that as soon as possible. Um, students, interact with each other while we're on the break. So we've got 30 minutes before I come back. There are so many of you here and it's going to be speaking part three. Speaking part three will connect to this topic. So use the website and uh, communicate with each other try to figure out you know what's going on with your uh, connection if you're not able to connect or not able to hear me or and I'm not able to hear you as you can see it does work and I spoke to three different people from three different countries in the world so if you have the right type of connection the right VPN the right internet it will work okay um, that's it for this class again um, for those of you while you're waiting you can pull the trigger and make that decision to uh, purchase the premium version of the course by clicking the big red button here at aehelp.com or for general IELTS at giltshelp.com. And if you're in these classes regularly, you're getting ready for the IELTS, it's a worthy investment of your funds. Uh, I'm, going, I'm coming back in 30 minutes and half an hour with speaking part three, which will be about shopping for food, shopping for our daily needs. Uh, again, aehelp.com, academic outs, gltshelp.com, general outs. Thank you so much to all of my volunteers today, Anna, Angel, Amra. All the volunteers had names starting with A today. Interesting. Um, I wonder if I have a predisposition for that since my name starts with an A, Adrian, right? Hmm. Food for thought. No pun intended. Much love to all of you. I'll be back in 30 minutes. Hopefully I'll see you then. Bye for now.